Welcome back, another episode. The stories in the show have gotten incredibly cliched and repetitious over time. How many times can Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence square off? How many times will Martin Cove's crease make a reappearance, smoking his signature cigar and wearing a threatening grimace? How many times can the young characters question if they are Miyagi-Do, Eagle Fang, or some other combination of the two? How many protracted battle scenes is too many? However, just like the series' central underdog tale, Cobra Kai eventually rises from the ashes to triumph. The show ends on one hell of a cliffhanger by the end of the five episodes that debut as part of this first half of the sixth season. The children are spending the most of this season getting ready for the Sekai Teikai, a world championship karate tournament that has been held every two years for over a century. Hawk declares, this is the Olympics plus the Gladiator Games plus the Kumite from Bloodsport, all rolled into one. I briefly questioned whether the Sekai Teikai is actually a competition because of the seriousness with which Cobra Kai handles it. Notice the spoiler, it's not, but it's a fantastic tool to expand the karate competition's reach beyond the All-Valley Karate Tournament and make it an international event. The humor in the show has always been a secret weapon, and Season 6 offers a lot of it. As Yuji Okimoto's character Chosen eats every cannoli in the La Russo home, Amanda remarks, Guy flies in for the weekend to kill Terry Silver and stays for another three months. That's typical, correct. Paul Walter Hosser, whose profile has grown since the show's debut thanks to appearances in Blackbird and Inside Out 2, delightfully plays karate wannabe Raymond again. The world, in Johnny's opinion, provides the show its greatest impact. Highlights include his interpretations of what goes into an adolescent girl's sleepover, how to handle his new job, and how simple the delivery of his child will be. The exhibition exhibits a persistent, sly self-awareness and a readiness to laugh at oneself. Cobra Kai also manages to stay charmingly rooted in its 80 seconds cultural heritage, from the iconic quote shoutouts to the fantastic hair band soundtrack to pretty much everything Johnny. Time is one thing that the series cannot stop. The fifth season of the show aired nearly two years ago. However, a year or so may have gone since the Cobra Kai debut, and it's only been a few months in their time frame. That presents a little issue because many of the youthful performers appear far older than they did when the show debuted. In this last season, they are applying to universities in their senior year of high school, stressing over their grades and extracurricular activities. Regretfully, the show is still dedicated to revealing more of Kreese's past, a subject it started examining in the third season. Kreese's arc appears to be the most unnecessary of all of them. The reason why Kreese is such a villain has already been demonstrated on the episode. Additionally, this season has seen Daniel go deeper into Mr. Miyagi's past as the show revolves around its antagonist. Although it's wonderful that the program is still paying tribute to Morita, this most recent plot twist does seem a bit like Cobra Kai begging for more stories. For more videos, subscribe.